Following the recent trials of ex-cops involved in the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, there's been renewed focus on the very real problem of police violence in this country. My next two guests are both individuals who have responded to personal and collective trauma with efforts to help inform and empower their communities. Eton Thomas is an 11-year NBA veteran and lifelong advocate for social justice. His newly released book, Police Brutality and White Supremacy, The Fight Against American Traditions. The book makes a strong case for justice and accountability, and it points to solutions with applications across the public sphere. He's joined by Ashley Carr after her sister, Tatiana Jefferson, was killed by a Texas police officer. She co-founded Sisters of the Movement. It's a nonprofit that fights for police reform. Ashley is also director of the Tatiana Project. It provides children with hands-on educational and career-oriented programs in science and technology, engineering, arts, and math. Etan and Ashley, I want to thank you both for joining me on the show. Uh, Etan, I'm going to start with you. Uh, why did you decide to write a book called Police Brutality and White Supremacy? Well, um, you know, there's been so much going on. I wanted to really get a deep dive into this topic. And, I, you know, you're also somebody who I interviewed for the book, so I definitely appreciate your contribution. Um, but I really wanted to elevate the voices of the impact of family members. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting just listening to the State of the Union address, um, listening to it. And, um, you know, President Biden made a lot of promises to a lot of members of the impact of family um, that I actually interviewed for the book on his campaign trail to put police reform as a top on his agenda. He, you know, he promised them that he was going to make um, different changes to be able to make sure that police are held accountable. So then to hear him get on the stage during the State of the Union address and, and say that he wants to, you know, fund the police, and he kept repeating it, and he didn't say anything about how he was going to hold them accountable, it seemed like he went back on his promise. But I'll let Ms. Ashley Carr definitely um, tell you how she felt herself. Yeah, we're going to talk about Biden, because that was a key moment, a key sticking point for people who said, look, all this other talk, whatever else we think about it, there was an opportunity to talk about student loan repayment. There was an opportunity to talk about more about the Supreme Court uh, nomination, which he did. But, but forget about what you didn't talk about. You actively chose to talk about funding the police and speak out against people who are saying defund the police. You ain't have to say that. You could have just, you could have just, you could have just ate your food and sat there, President Biden. But, uh, Ita, I want to talk to Ashley, but before I do, I want to ask you one more question because your book weaves together kind of personal experiences uh, along with interviews from family members of people who were uh, victims of police brutality, uh, some critical voices. Uh, how has connecting with, I guess, families of victims uh, affected you? I mean, you're a social justice activist. You're out there in the real world, in the field, doing this work. But sometimes there's a disconnect between the work we do and the people who are affected by it. How did connecting with those families affect your work? Well, it's the whole reason why I'm doing this. I mean, the, the, the impact of family members are the ones who are directly dealing with this. You know, we're watching case by, by case happen, um, case after case happen, and, you know, we have our feelings about it, but people don't understand that, you know, after the cameras go away, the impact of family members are sitting there still trying to put the pieces together after it's no longer a trending topic. And they're all fighting for justice for their loved ones, also for justice for everyone else um, who didn't get the recognition that they got. You know, for other people in their, you know, cities that, um, you know, for laws to be changed so that the police can't do to other people what they did to their loved ones. So I have so much tremendous respect for the impact of family members, and I've been blessed to have the platform that I have and be able to utilize voices like yourself and other athletes and other, you know, entertainers and, you know, other, other everybody like that, and, and to be able to elevate their voice and to really support them in their cause. And what I saw from Biden... You know what I mean? It really bothered me because I had a, I have a direct contact with them and I've heard them express and seen their efforts to really get things changed. And that's what we were expecting. That's what we were promised. And that's not what we were, that, that is happening, unfortunately. Absolutely. You know, we talk about people who are directly affected by this. Ashley, your sister uh, was killed by police in 2019. Uh, tell us about her. Tell us, before we talk about the tragedy, sometimes we, we don't humanize folk. We don't recognize that these are people who, who are loved. Uh, who was your sister? Who was she in life? Tatiana was everything. She was my baby sister. Um, she's a gamer. She's a HBCU graduate. Um, 
She was a foodie. She did. Um, she liked watching thriller thriller movies. She was just amazing. She was an animal lover. She had two dogs, three cats at the at, at the time of her death. So you know, it was that was just what she did. She was a she was a giver. She was a um, a wealth of knowledge. You know, she always knew hacks to the world and things of that nature that you never would think about. But um, it's a lot that you miss. You know, you're learning that, you know, you're having to not be without those things and not having that person to call, even though she was my baby sister. She was a person that I would call for her advice because her words uh, might not have been loud, but it was definitely powerful. So, talk, I, yeah. That is talk, talk to me about the... No, no, that, that's incredibly important for us to know and recognize and understand. Um, can you tell us about the circumstances surrounding her death? Well, in um, 2019, October 2019, um, police came to the house um, for a call that was a wellness check and um, proceeded to uh, surround the house and went into, through our uh, backyard at that time. And um, my sister and my nephew were inside playing video games. And um, she heard some noise in, inside the backyard. and. She looked out and, and while she, at the immediate time of her looking out, the police sh literally shot her as he was saying, show me your hands. I mean, literally, um, she never got an opportunity to comply at all. So um, wow. the jury, I mean, she's, but she's been, we're, we're one of the lucky families I can say who, I don't know, this kind of odd to say, but uh, we do have a trial day. There's a lot of families who do not get trial dates, who not do not even get go to the grand jury. So, you know, um, we're thankful, we're thankful for that, but the trial date has been pushed back several times and currently we're waiting for a trial date of May um, 16th of this year. Right, and, and, it, and, and as you accurately point out, many people don't get a trial date, they don't get charges, they don't get the grand jury indictment, they don't get an arrest, they don't get an investigation. You know, before you even get to the end game of a conviction, um, it's difficult to get people to even pay attention to the issue itself when it comes to black people. And the more vulnerable you are, the poorer you are, the blacker you are, the, the more trans you are, the often the more woman you are, um, the less likely you are to get justice in these circumstances. And that's why we want to talk about this. And Etan, your book gets us to a very interesting place because you're not just talking about a policing system and a criminal legal system that doesn't work for us, but you're saying that it's systematic, systematically uh, sort of reinforcing and reflecting white supremacy. That's a very provocative and important claim that you make in the book that I want to talk more about after the break. So Ashley, Etan, stay with me. Everybody, we're going to have a lot to talk about after the break. We're talking police brutality. We're talking white supremacy. We're talking about this amazing new book. And we're talking about how we can get justice for the most vulnerable people in our community. Stay right here. <laughs> 